Hey everybody, Mike Lawson here with FitExec. On the show today, we have Entrepreneur on Fire's John Lee Dumas giving us the entrepreneur's perspective of staying fit. Check it out. Hey everybody, Mike Lawson here with Fit Exec. Welcome to our program. We have a very special guest on the program today, Mr. John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire. How's it going, sir? I can't complain, Mike. I am here. I am prepared to ignite. Excellent. Glad to hear you. I mean, you have an incredible story about your whole Entrepreneur on Fire uh, podcast, website, empire, whatever you want to call it. But I want to talk about how you stay fit in yeah. your entrepreneurial life because you have a schedule like no other. And I'm like, how do you find time to do fitness? But before we get into that, what do you do to stay <laughs> fit? <laughs> so I will say this, I launched Entrepreneur on Fire in 2012. Yep. Um, 2013 and 2014, those three years, they were like my seasons of work. And I worked super hard, I put in all the hours but my health did suffer, my fitness did suffer. And I've always been a fit guy, you know, I was military for eight years, mm -hmm. so I really loved being in good shape and, and took pride in it. So yeah. I wasn't happy with my trajectory. So 2015 came and I said, this is now my season of health and wellness. And I've stuck to it, brother. So, you know, my, my being fit starts at night, believe it or not, okay. I'm in bed right there at 9.15 p.m. every night. I'm an old wow. man, I'm not afraid to admit it. Good you know, you. I am, I am getting up at 5.30 a.m. and I want my eight hours of Z's if possible. So mm -hmm. I'm out on this bay at 5.40. Mm -hmm. As soon as I wake up, I immediately go to my bathroom, splash cold water on my face to kind of get that cortisol going. Then I brush my teeth with fluoride-free toothbrush, uh, Tom's of Maine, little yeah. plug for a Maine company. Right here, we use the same thing. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, man. And, uh, and then I'm off to my little 35-minute power walk. It's a power walk. I have a little weighted arm thing, so I'm doing the little mm -hmm. this like here to get, get some uh, more blood flowing. And then right when I get back, I do my seven minutes um, circuit training app right here on my smartphone. I bring my really? smartphone with me, yeah. and I rip off a seven-minute circuit training after that 35-minute power walk. Um, and that is kind of my morning routine because then I come up here, I use the neti pot. I'm not sure if you're a neti pot guy, but yeah. I love it. It's great for draining your lymph nodes. It's amazing. Okay, I'll have to check um, that out. Yeah, and then I do a lot of um, skin brushing um, right before I get into the shower, which kind of activates you know all the skin cells and gets them going. Then I'm yep. jumping in for a nice Tabata shower, which is five minutes, 20 seconds cold, 10 minutes um, hot. So going back and forth from hot to cold, okay. always ending on cold. Okay. Then I get out of the shower and I do a nice five minute stretch yes. right there, um, you know, and just kind of out to the world, just saying, woo, woo, get <laughs> time for some stretching, you know, I'm right up to my bay window. And uh, sometimes a crew team goes by from San Diego State and I'm just like, what's up, boys? <laughs> right on. And, you know, that's what I do every day before I start work. And now, I also love doing sunset walks as well. Mm -hmm. So I'll often kind of end the day with a nice 35 minute sunset power walk. Man, you are about the outdoors. I love yeah. it. Very it's gotta cool. be outdoors. We can do that in San Diego. So breathing the fresh air. Yes. Yeah, 365 in San Diego for sure. I do have a pull-up bar here. I have a little rebounder. You might be able to see poking up behind my I couch. I do, I see that. So um, I, I do a couple of uh, mix and match mm -hmm. things, but most of the time it's just power walks. Gotcha, gotcha. So, I mean, all that said, I mean, how does this benefit you personally? And then ultimately, how does it benefit your media empire, so to speak? I mean, how do you see it uh, making things positive and, and going in an upward direction for you? So it's all about the energy. It's all about the energy that I can bring, the mental clarity and focus that I can dedicate to my work every single day, because mm -hmm. it's a lot of mental bandwidth. It's a lot of uh, needed clarity. And if I didn't put the right foods in my body, you know, if I didn't get outside and breathe the fresh air, get some real vitamin D on the, on the skin, you yeah. know, if I wasn't doing the right things, I wouldn't have that mental clarity, that acuity to really make things happen. But because I do, because I take care of myself first, both fitness and food wise, mm -hmm. I, can I can tackle the day. And I'm telling you, I'm still tired at the end of the day and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm crashing out. Like I don't have this unboundless energy and I definitely have my down days. And I definitely have, you know, my issues as well. Like mm -hmm. it's not like this perfect thing, but I am definitely, you know, hacking my way to what I think is best for me. You know, I'm actually in the state of ketosis right now, which is pretty cool. It's the first time I've ever even given that an attempt. So it's just me trying it out. I don't know if I'll like it or if I'll, if I'll hate it, but mm -hmm. you know, I just did a little um, body fat dunk. You know, it's actually in San Diego, yeah. Mike. They have a guy that drives around and looks like an ice cream truck. Really? And it's a portable body fat dunk tank. 
and he was right at Pacific Beach just um, one week ago. <laughs> really? And so I, I ran over there and I you know, gave him 35 bucks and I did the dunk tank and I was 14.1% body wow. fat. Um, which isn't great, but it's not horrible. It's not all, That's not bad. No, you know, it's like it's it's like on the border of being right. good. Right. It's like red, yellow, and then green, and I was just barely in the green. Okay. So I want to get down to eleven. You know, I'd love to see myself at eleven, and mm-hmm. and who knows? I don't even know if if single digits would be healthy for me and my body size and my kind of just like, you know, I'm kind of a, uh, you know, I'm more of a of a stout guy than than just your 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 average person. So mm-hmm. I don't know if that'd be healthy, but I do know that I'd love to try to get down to like 11, 11 and a half body fat to see what that's at. But yep. it's a focus. Yeah, and I remember years ago when I did lifeguard training, we would all have to be in the swimming pool in the diving well part, and we would all have to like put our arms around here and see who would float and who wouldn't float. And if you had like no body fat, you would sink. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was the one who sunk to the bottom. I had Boom. no body fat. Like I'm yeah. just a skinny runt kid, you know. Not but, a bad thing. Exactly. So I'm I'm one of the people that has to work in order to put a fat on me. So, <laughs> uh, but uh, being a family guy now and stuff, it's not it's not so hard. It's not as hard as it used to be. But, yeah, I was uh, gonna say. I mean, you're no spring chicken anymore, so it's pretty impressive that uh, you're still as thin as you are. But it's probably only gonna get tougher. It did. Yeah. Is it every year? It gets a little bit tougher. So you got to work a little bit harder. But uh, like anyway, if I, I mean, did right now at 24, what I'm doing at 35, I would be a shredded machine. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's just like, I've just been improving enough over the years to kind of stay like decent. <laughs> That's kind of been like my mode. And so I'm finally kind of ready to break out of that and just be like, you know what, I have like one, I have like five good years left. You, <laughs> no, know? you got more than that, come on. <laughs> I'm just mean like, yeah, okay, we'll see. You got 10, 20, 30, 40, come on, John, come on. <laughs> You're in San Diego. Come on. This is the land of health nuts and, and sit-ups, you know? It is amazing. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, that brings me to my next point is like, I mean, we're all, we all live busy, busy lives. And, and it sounds like you really have your schedule segmented. You have to have your schedule segmented, especially in your line of work. I mean, do you have any like accountability mechanisms that, uh, that keep you on this routine or is it just all you yourself? It is me. You know, I think really? it does start with the individual. Um, you, know, you can you can have all of these accountability partners and apps that are reminding yeah. you and X, Y, and Z. And all those things are very helpful. And you should have those as part of your life if possible. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. But yeah. when it comes down to it, if it's not deep in your heart as something that you want to change and commit to, yeah. you're not going to find ongoing success with it. So for me, it really had to come with a mental shift and a mental focus that this is something that I'm committed to. You know, I want to be 60 and 70 years old and still feeling like I can go out for a nice walk yeah. and, and, and enjoy myself. Yeah. And so it, it takes, you know, this is our one vessel that we have. And, you know, to be honest, we don't tip really treat our, vessel, our, our vessels that well as mm. human beings. And it's kind of sad. Yeah. You mentioned earlier that uh, you, you kind of went through your years of work when you were starting Entrepreneur on Fire. And then in each of your episodes, you always say, you, what was your aha moment? And then what was your aha moment when you kind of came out of that three or four years where you were just working, you're grinding it out 16 hours a day. He's like, you know what? I got to get healthy here to maintain. What was, what kind of, was there anything that uh, kind of struck you that put you on the positive path? Yeah, I just kind of started feeling the burnout. You know, I just wasn't as excited when I woke up in the morning. Yeah. I was just, you know, I, I really set up some good systems that allowed me some more free time. And I was mm-hmm. realizing that I was using my free time more as kind of a lazy person would than somebody that, you know, wanted to use it in a good way. Like, you know, before I would, any free time I had, I would run out and I would do my exercises and have fun. But now I was finding in 2015 that I was actually having more free time because I had set up more systems and brought in more people that, you know, were doing and taking things off of my plate. So Mm -hmm. I really had this free time to myself and I wasn't using it productively. And I had to kind of scratch my head and say why and and what could fill that void Mm -hmm. of unproductiveness and, and just unhealthiness and that was fitness and nutrition and health and wellness. And it's been a big initiative for me. Nice. And how about your military background? I mean, I'm sure that has played a big role, a big influence in your life and kind of the discipline and all that stuff as well. It has. Unfortunately, the military is clueless when it comes to nutrition. <laughs> yeah. So, at, you know, as is 99% of America, including all doctors. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the sad thing was, is that I, I learned very little in the military about nutrition. But what I did learn was the importance of consistent exercise. Yeah. You know, every day that you are committing to, to working out, it's called PT, physical training. You know, we take tests to hold you accountable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're, if, you're, if you're overweight, if, if, you, if you can't pass these physical tests, 
like you're in massive trouble and you, you know, you could really face some disciplinary action. Mm -hmm. So I really saw the value of that and that kind of kept me in check, you know, going forward exercise wise. I just wish I had a clue about nutrition, you know, until recently. Yeah. I wish that my parents had a clue. I wish that the military had a clue. I wish that doctors had a clue. Yeah. Uh, but it seems that really nobody does except for a select few. Are there certain foods that you eat that keep you, keep you, I mean, we all experience kind of like the, the early afternoon baby head wobble or trying mm. to stay awake type. Are there certain foods that you eat? I mean, without going down the, the power drink, all that Red Bull stuff. Yeah. Is there anything kind of natural organic that you would, uh, that you would? Well, I would never do? touch a Red Bull with a 10 foot pole. Oh, I don't do, I don't do any sugars. I don't do yeah. any grains. Um, the only things that I'm putting in my body realistically, except for every now and then when uh, a desperate cheat does happen. But, um, you know, I'm, I do, I do a lot of fats. I'm a big fat guy. Really? I do, um, do ghee, do okay. organic grass fed butter. Mm -hmm. You know, I do like, I love, I, I do a lot of meats, but you know, like when I get a ribeye, that's really fatty, like yeah. all that fat I'm yeah. consuming as well. Um, vegetables, you know, are, are really the majority of what I put in my body. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I never say no to a vegetable. I definitely limit fruits. You know, that's kind of nature's candy. There's a lot of sugars and fruits, and mm -hmm. not that it's bad for you, but I just don't overdo fruits. Um, and I'm and I'm actually going on a little nut cleanse right now. So I'm not, yeah, I'm not doing any nuts like almonds, um, macadamia nuts. I love all of them. Yeah, but uh, I'm not doing them right now. It's okay. something that I'm taking out of uh, of my diet. I kind of like to pull things out every now and then and kind of cycle. And I'm actually off of caffeine. I'm off you. of alcohol. Um, I cycle in and out of both of those things, mm -hmm. but I just believe that again, like it's good to not always be doing one. Like I don't want to be having a cup of coffee every single day because you know you just lose the effect of the caffeine. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. But now, like I'm gonna go three weeks without it. You better believe that next cup of coffee I'm having is gonna be like zoing. <laughs> it's gonna make a little bit of difference. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> well, and living in San Diego, you gotta go to In and Out at least once a month or something like never that. Never been. I moved here in 2009. I've never been. Really? Oh my yeah. gosh, John. Okay. All right. Well, we may have to change that. That's one. Uh -huh. If you ever have a cheat day, that's the way to go. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see here. Um, just to kind of wrap up here. I mean, do you have any advice for others, other folks out there who may be kind of in a similar situation, maybe stuck in a rut in their careers? I mean, you talk about this day in and day out how you know, people escape from their jobs and get go the entrepreneur route and find their way and, and become great successes. On the fitness side, fitness, diet, rest, I mean, do you have any advice for folks out there who may be kind of uh, stuck in a rut, stuck in a cubicle somewhere like, gosh, what, what can I do to boost my career fitness wise? Yeah, well, number one, I mean, there's no perfect system for anybody um, as far as like, there's no one system for anybody. And that's why I'm all about experimenting and all about testing. And I think people should really go into it with an open mind and be willing to test and be willing to try something that works for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just know that I don't react well with grains and I don't react well with doing a lot of sugars. I just don't feel yeah. great with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and at the same time, like I'm pretty sure that I'm not great with nuts either. You know, again, I'm trying to cycle. So I'm really just testing these things and implementing different strategies. But the biggest thing I think is start small mm -hmm. and really start with a goal. Mm -hmm. I'm big on on setting and accomplishing goals. In fact, that's why I just really um, I'm in the process of releasing my first physical product, which is a book called The Freedom Journal, which okay. is how to accomplish your number one goal in 100 days. Okay, and that's what it's all about. It's just about setting a smart goal. Now, what's a smart goal? Specific, measurable attainable, relative, and timely. Mm -hmm. It's like setting all of those parameters around a physical goal, mm -hmm. nutrition, exercise, whatever it might be, and make it a small, the key word there is attainable. Make it small and attainable right. so that you can actually be tracking your progress, having accountability partners along the way, and making that happen. Exactly, yes. Yeah, I've spoken to a lot of people about it, and they say some of the, the hardest thing is like, if you go to a gym, the hardest thing is getting out of bed. It's that yeah. first step out of bed. And then once you're out, it's good to go. Same thing with you, I'm sure with you. Get out of bed, get that foot out the door and going for that power walk or that run on the beach in the morning. So Totally. Yeah, indeed. Well, I mean, you answered my next question, actually. I was going to say, what's <laughs> on the horizon for Entrepreneur on Fire? What's next? <laughs> yeah, so the Freedom Journal is big and people can check it out at okay. thefreedomjournal.com. Okay. Um, it's just a landing page right now because the book's actually being um, produced in China um, as we speak. Okay. And that's quite a process. It's going to yeah. get shipped over via boats to the Amazon fulfillment stores and that's the whole thing because I'm doing this all on my own, funding it myself, doing everything. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be a leather bound journal, like really cool, gold embossed, you know, with a bookmark, tassel and, 
you know, with a little flat to close. It's going to be a beautiful, um, beautiful, something I'm really excited and proud of. Um, you know, something else that we're really looking forward yeah. to with Entrepreneur on Fire is really just continuing to be better at the basics, you know, delivering free content to our listeners, mm -hmm. to Entrepreneur on Fire um, in general, to Fire Nation. And so, you know, we have a completely free podcast course, a completely free webinar course that people can go check out at eofire.com. Yes, it's a very, I mean, I'm a big fan of it. I'm a subscriber oh, cool. and, um, and I just, I listen to your podcast, gosh, probably a week. I try to try to get at least a couple each week and it's just it's very inspiring. You know, I mean, these stories that people have out there are very inspiring They are, and it makes you want to do things. You want to do things better, you know? And so yeah. kudos to you for uh, stepping up and doing something like this. I mean, your story is, is fantastic and, uh, hope uh, more people follow in your footsteps. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, everybody, anything else, John Lee? You want to talk about anything else? Or <laughs> I feel like we nailed it, man. Yeah. You know, this is uh, one of those interviews where we're just like, wow, I wish I could have this much fun every time I boom, get on them. Boom, boom, boom. That's what we're all about here. Efficiency and fun. <laughs> <laughs> all right, John. Everybody, entrepreneur on fire is John Lee Dumas. Thank you very much, John. Appreciate the time.